The human city of Freeport is considered by most to be the hub of Antonica. It is the trade capital of the continent, and since it holds the only port with a regular boat to Fadewa, adventurers from all across the world gather in or around the city to trade goods and items with each other. The city is ruled by Sir Lucan de Lea and the Freeport City Council. It faces civil strife, however, as the Knights of Truth battle for control. On the surface, the city appears to cater mainly to good races, with the streets being filled with humans and half-elves. Although, evil races move through the city's sewers, which have hidden passageways that can get dark travellers to almost anywhere they wish to go. Freeport is located on the eastern coast of Antonica. Unlike the remote human city of Quinos, Freeport is a rather central location of the community, having several cities close enough to travel to and from by foot, as well as numerous teleport locations surrounding it. The closest of those being the Wizard Spies in North Road. Although there are Druid Rings and Wizard Spies in the West Common Lands, which would be up there for some of the most trafficked teleport destinations in the game. The closest city to Freeport is the Dark Elf city of Neriak separated only by Nectalus Forest and the Common Lands. The Dark Elves are far from allies to Freeport, and their influence can be seen in the city's underground in the form of the Church of Dismal Rage. The halfling city of Rivervale is also within travelling distance, separated only by Kithika Forest and the Common Lands. The halflings aren't necessarily allies to Freeport, but neither are they enemies. They normally like to keep to themselves. Any druids or rangers that decide to travel to Freeport usually have to frequent Rivervale as it is the closest place to train and buy spells for those classes. To the south there is Grob and Ogok, homes of the Trolls and the Ogres. Although these cities are not too far away from Freeport, the journey through the Desert of Roe is a dangerous one for lower level adventurers. These two cities are also the closest locations for shamans to train and buy spells, although they're only catered to Ogre and Troll shamans. Unfortunately, barbarians get a bum rap having to travel all the way back to Halas. And Ixars get it even worse having to go to Kabbalus. Last but not least, the dock within Freeport is home to the only boat that travels to and from Fadewer. Even though this is one of the longest boat rides in the game, it gives dwarves, wood elves, high elves, and gnomes all access to Freeport. Freeport by default is home to humans and half-elves, but due to the central location of the city and the ease in which it is to travel there, it is not uncommon to see all the races the game has to offer while adventuring here. Even crafty Ixars can sometimes be seen travelling the streets of Freeport. Guild halls for all classes except rangers, druids and shamans are present within the city. There are four deities at play in Freeport, three good and one evil. Nathaniel Ma, the Lightbringer, and his twin sister Erolissi Ma, the Queen of Love. These two hold almost complete dominion over North Freeport, where their followers, the Priests of Ma and the Knights of Truth, gather at the Temple of Ma and the Hall of Truth. Inaruk, the Prince of Hate, has dominion over the Freeport Underground. His followers, the Dismal Rage, can be found hidden in the location under the Freeport slums. Quelios, the Tranquil, is also present, but seems to only be tied to the Monk Guild, the Ashen Order, in West Freeport, although she is allied to Erolissi and is enemies with Inarak. There are newbie yards in both East and West Freeport. These are decent, as they have plenty of creatures to kill in a rather small space, so you won't get lost, and the guards and merchants are always close by, so there's very little danger. The surrounding areas give players lots of opportunities. Adjacent to the eastern noob yard is North Row. This zone has a variety of things to kill with lower end mobs being closer to the city, getting higher the further you adventure outwards. On the western side of the city lies the common lands. These zones are great to level in for multiple reasons. There is an overabundance of creatures that roam this zone from top to bottom, as well as a few orc camps which you can almost always find groups at. On top of that, due to these zones being the major trade hub of the game, if you play your cards right, you can often get buffs from the high level players trading in the tunnel or traveling to and from the rings and spires. The common lands are not without their dangers, however. Random high level griffins can patrol through the zone as well as invisible air elementals whose only goal in life is to aggro and kill unaware noobs as they make their way to and from the tunnel. The Fallen is a dungeon that can be found within the West Common Lands. This is a small and simple classic style dungeon that has a tiered floor system. It requires keys to progress to each lower level. Players can start here at around level 7, and if they wanted to really push it they could go into their 20s. The zone apparently has one of the highest XP modifiers in the game, so it's not necessarily unheard of. 
the oasis of Mar is on the opposite end of North Row. This is probably one of the most popular zones to group between levels 10 and 20 in the game. There are a huge amount of crocodiles that roam the shore and a practically unending supply of orcs that roam the opposite end of the zone called the Orc Highway. The oasis also holds its share of dangers. Sand giants are known to frequent the zone, including a rather tenacious one named Kazel, as well as the occasional dry bone skeleton. Now I don't know Freeport as well as I know Quinos, so when it came to finding easter eggs I had to do a little exploring. Now I'm sure I've missed things, so if you know any be sure to put them in the comments. There is an NPC at the Hog Callers Inn in West Freeport named Lady Shay. If you hail her, she will ask you what house you are from. You can say you are from the House of Style, and she will reply, I would never have guessed by the way you look. If you say you are from the House of Pancakes, she will laugh at you and say, I can tell, it looks like you ate a House of Pancakes. These are both Easter eggs on their own, however, the character herself may be a reference to the Game of Thrones character of the same name, as her actual in-game quest shows she has quite a weakness for red wine. At the Academy of Arcane Science in West Freeport, you can find a high elf wizard guildmaster named Opal Darkbriar. But, if you run down into the northern sewers, you can find a group of knights hiding at the end of one of the tunnels. Among them is a wizard named Jovik Spliegel. If you talk to him, he will tell you that even the Tower of Arcane Science is not safe from the influence of the Dismal Rage, and that Opal Darkbriar is not what she seems, darkening the minds of her apprentices. Head over to the sewers in the east, to the Church of the Dismal Rage, you can find a Dark Elf Necromancer Guildmaster named Opal Darkbriar. This character actually has her own faction under her own name. I did a bit of digging and I came up with some interesting lore about her from the Realms of Norath pen and paper RPG book. She was part of the group known as the Divine Rage, which were a group of necromancers and clerics sent by the King of Neriak to spread the word of Inarok to the people of Freeport. These guys all ended up getting killed in battle, and Opal was the only surviving member. From that point on, she became the founding member of the Dismal Rage. Using her necromancy skills, she was able to capture the soul of a high elf wizard and encase it in a gem shard. Using this shard, she is able to cast an illusion on herself to appear as a high elf. Over the course of many years, she made her way through the ranks of the arcane scientists and became the guildmaster of the wizards there. In the RPG book, it goes on to say that Opal also founded the Church of the Firstborn as her own personal cult to serve her needs. The group is made up of only necromancers and shadow knights. This relates back to the in-game faction of Opal Darkbriar. The majority of negative faction hits come from killing necromancers and shadow knights across Antonica. Much like Quinos Guards, the Freeport Guards are split into two opposing factions, the Freeport Militia and the Knights of Truth. However, unlike Quinos, you can tell which faction the Guards are just by looking at them. The Knights of Truth are only in North Freeport, and the Freeport Militia are only in the East and West Freeport. I always knew about the war between the two types of Guards in Freeport, but in the process of making this video, I discovered quite a diverse storyline behind it. A quick summary of the story goes like this. Lucan Delia was an orphan of Freeport, taken in by the Temple of Mar. The priest realized he was very agile and strong for his age, so they requested one of the paladin guilds to take him on as a squire. Due to the shortage of trainers at the time, he became the squire of Valeron de Shire, the leader of the Knights of Truth. Eventually, Lucan became a formidable knight himself. He was well liked by the community, and he had a gift for leadership. Initially, the Knights of Truth had the task of protecting Freeport, the Common Lands, and all of the human settlements on the eastern coast of Antonica. One day, the Priests of Mar and the Knights of Truth received divine inspiration from their gods to undertake a crusade across the Ocean of Tears into Fadewa. The Mar Twins had become concerned with the vast armies of undead that had been forming and commanded their followers to seek out and destroy them. This was called the Crusade of Tears. During this crusade, Sir Lucan was left in charge of Freeport with a handful of knights and clerics. He initially did a lot of good for the city and the people respected him. However, he began to enjoy the respect and power he was getting a little bit too much. He started hiring mercenaries to keep the city walls manned at all times and he was using the temple's funds to do so. One of the remaining paladins of the temple, Sentry Dilius, went to confront Lucan about his new methods of ruling the city. It isn't exactly known what happened, but the confrontation got out of hand and it ended up with Lucan killing Dilius. With this act, Sir Lucan had angered his gods and was stripped of all of his powers as a paladin forever. Brother Gentry remained loyal to Lucan because he had previously sworn to obey him. The remaining clerics and paladins turned on Lucan, but they lacked the forces to defeat his mercenaries. They were able to hold their ground in North Freeport, keeping the Temple of Ma and the Hall of Truth safe. 
Knowing that when the Crusaders returned to Freeport, the wizards, warriors, and monks would side with them over him, Lucan bolstered his mercenary forces and instituted the Freeport Militia. He also allied with the Church of Dismal Rage and the Coalition of Trade Folk Underground. What he feared more than the return of the Crusaders was the retribution he would face from not one, but two gods if he were ever to be slain. Because of this, he made an unholy bargain with the Dismal Rage, which granted him the freedom from the fear of death. When the crusade finally did end and the rest of the paladins and clerics returned to the city, they managed to make their way from the docks into North Freeport. However, they had suffered considerable casualties during the crusade and did not have the manpower to take the city back from Lucan and his militia. This brings us to the current situation, which is an uneasy stalemate of the militia on the east and west side of the city while the knights are holed up in the north. Well, that went for a little longer than I thought, but hopefully it was entertaining for people who didn't already know the story. I know this video had more of a lore overtone to it rather than easter eggs, but like I mentioned in the first video, Quinos is the one that I knew most about. I know there's bound to be things that I didn't cover, but I'd like to keep these videos around the 10 minute mark. I'll be looking at Rivervale for the next video, but after that it will be a toss up between Neriak and Halas. Let me know in the comments which of those two cities you want to see first, and I'll tally the votes up in a week or so to decide. Also, I'm always looking for little tidbits and easter eggs for upcoming videos. If you know anything interesting about Rivervale, let me know in the comments. If you can give me a source and I don't already know about it, I'll give you a shout out when I put it in the video. So thanks very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.